As we have seen, until the arrival of Clement XIV, Ganganelli, 1769-1774, the Vatican contained two distinct collections of ancient artifacts. The Antiquarium of Statues in the Belvedere, unchained since the mid-16th century, and the Vatican Museum, properly speaking, contained within the library and divided into two sectors, pagan and Christian. The new pope was also becoming concerned at the continued exodus of ancient treasures from Rome sold by private individuals and purchased by various Italian and foreign merchants acting as go-betweens for the final buyers. During this period, Rome was the world's center of antiquity, attracting collectors, particularly from England, Germany, and Russia. Accordingly, Clement XIV, advised in the matter by his treasurer, Giovanni Angelo Braschi, the future Pope Pius VI, began to buy up ancient treasures that were destined to be shipped abroad. The Barberini Candelabras, the Meleagro of Scopas, etc. The custody of these treasures required the creation of a new museum, which, deriving its name from the Pope, was called the Clementine in 1771. The site chosen was the Belvedere Palazzetto, where the antiquarium of the statues already existed. The architect Alessandro Dori was appointed to adapt the rooms for their new role. While the direction of the scientific aspects of the work was entrusted to the Commissioner for the Antiquities of Rome, Giovann Battista Visconti, who had taken over from Winkelmann in 1769. At first it was decided to use the loggia and the adjacent rooms at ground level, which had been converted into the gallery of the statues, the room of the busts, and the room of the animals. Dori died during the works, and his position was taken by Michelangelo Simonetti, who was to spend the rest of his life dealing with the museum. Once the conversion of the ground level had been completed, it was decided that the courtyard where the antiquarium of the statues was located could be used to better advantage by the construction of a portico which would also enable the removal of the anti-aesthetic wooden shutters that protected the statues. At the end of 1773, the work was completed apart from a few finishing touches. So this was the year engraved on the plaque commemorating the foundation of the museum. The accession of Pope Pius VI, former general treasurer to Clemente, meant that the works that had begun so well could continue. In 1776, Pius VI decided to enlarge the museum by arranging for the construction of two new wings. The first new wing involved the lengthening of the gallery of the statues, which was connected to the old room of the torso, creating what became the room of the animals, and the construction of the cabinet, later renamed the cabinet of the masks. The second wing involved the construction of a series of grandiose chambers, the Room of the Muses, the Round Room, and the Greek Cross Room, which connected the museum to the library, in particular the Pagan Museum, by way of the sumptuous stairway, now named after Simonetti.
These works, planned and directed by Simonetti, required a very painful sacrifice. The demolition of the frescoed Mantegna Chapel, which vanished without trace or too many regrets before the eyes of all the scholars of the day. The new rooms, which took their inspiration from Roman architecture, were linked to the older rooms by means of ingenious architectural devices, creating a route of many ramifications and ever-changing perspectives. Much use was made of ancient materials, columns, capitals, floor mosaics, statues used as telemons, etc. The statues were set out on ancient pedestals or, if modern, on extravagantly decorated bases. The busts were placed on marble tables standing on two orders. Some of the principal statues had their pedestals painted with landscape scenes. The vaults of the museum were decorated by Tommaso Conca, Room of the Muses. By Domenico De Angelis, Cabinet of the Masks. By Cristoforo Unterberger, Gallery of the Statues, Room of the Busts, etc. The stucco work was fashioned by Gaspare Sibilla, Giacinto Ferrari and others. The decorative marble sculptures are the work of Francesco Antonio Franzoni. The finishing touches to this complex of rooms had been almost completed in 1784 when the Simonetti stairs were open to the public. September of the same year saw the death of one of the prime movers of the museum. Giovan Battista Visconti. His position in the Commission of Antiquity, which also implied direction of the museum, was taken by his younger son, Filippo Aurelio. In 1785, Simonetti began refurbishing the Gallery of the Candelabras, located on the second floor above the Clementine Gallery of the Library. Following his death in 1787, the work was completed by a very young man, Giuseppe Camporese, who finished the construction of the Pio Clementine Museum by designing the new entrance, Atrium of the Four Gates. And directly above this, the Room of the Chariot, though the decorative details were finished a few years later. <laughs> 